when you're poor, you put up your hand in a family <laughs> meeting. Ah, le kagundi asoka mali uzo jakusemba yo. Welcome to this episode of Black No Sugar. Thank you for joining us for the last episode. If you have not subscribed to this channel, hit that button. We're still at a left book cafe. Check it out for books, for great coffee and amazing food. So today we'll be talking about something a bit sticky, both online and offline. I know that many of you viewers today and ourselves have experienced the phrase, check your privilege. That person is privileged. Yeah, you need to debunk, you know, all these things that we've been hearing about. So today we just want to have a one-on-one -on, -one on privilege and what it means to us here. Yeah, so I'll just begin with Anna. What does privilege mean to you? And is it possible for one to actually be privileged in one way and then oppressed in another? But also how does privilege manifest itself in our everyday life? I know so. That many times when people speak about privilege, what comes to mind is social justice, feminism, these, all these political things. So, what does privilege mean to you? Privilege to me means um, advantages that someone, an individual, or a group of people gets. Because of certain things, it may be their class, it may be their ethnicity, it may be any category that they may be a part of, there are ad advantages. And I will add that uh, some of these are, or many of these may be unmerited advantages, like mm. advantages they have received, not because they have worked for them, but because they accidentally fall into a certain category or life has made it that they are part mm. of that category. Mm. Yes. That you may be born rich or you may yeah. be born in Nyangole in this country yeah. or you're born a white woman yeah. or you are a man or you're a heterosexual woman, right? What does it mean to you, Tendo? For me, privilege, simply something you don't, you don't deserve to get an advantage, but now you have it. Mm -hmm. For me, I would consider it to be social privileges. I heard you saying that when we think about privilege, we think about feminism and the like. I think for me, when I think about privilege, and for many people, it's about the person who is sitting in a big Prado, and they are moving around, and they are, like you said, I'm Nyankore in Uganda, <laughs> and, you know, they are saying Haza, and all these other words that us Baganda don't understand. Mbwenu. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that, 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 that for me, that for me, actually, is, is, is what privilege is. But maybe I can add that, you know, for one to be privileged, you have to be taking away something from another person. So it's a detriment to another group of people. Mm. So it has to be looked at in that way, that mm. just because I, I, I'm probably, I think educated is another angle mm. of privilege, then I'm probably taking something away from the people that I'm interacting with, like, mm. you know, in this country, just studying in the University of Dar es Salaam. That, that gives you, like when we're at a job interview, like no one will ask me whether I know Uganda better. It's like, okay, this person is from the University of Dar es Salaam and they would get the job just, you know, because they're from the University of Dar es Salaam. Mm. We have expatriates uh, being flown in to discuss the quality of Uganda's coffee, you know, how to improve the market for Ugandan coffee in Uganda. Mm. That, that's like privilege for white people because, I mean, a whole country is flying you in as an expert on a, on a crop that's produced and has been produced in Uganda for quite a long time. Mm, mm, yeah, mm. so for me, it's that, you know, me that when someone says privilege, I'm like, it's that fat guy, you know, a bit fatter than Tendo with a big stomach in a Prado saying Hazan Mwenu and, and Ria Re. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You speak, about, you speak about that language and you remind me. There are so many offices in this country that you visit, and the moment you say, I am Kemidsha, was what? No, and And immediately, someone, even when you're not aware or you can't even speak the language, you will have to immediately summon your ancestors to remind you of this language because you need to navigate that office, yeah. right? And I know that in many times, even in interviews, a friend was telling me she got into an interview, and after she said her name, person changed language from yeah. the language they were using for other panelists, she assumed English, to I have gotten yeah. a job based yeah. on the fact that I look like them. A whole like job, them, right? And I think the lady <laughs> talked too much yeah. that she didn't realize, because I understand it. I worked in Kamwenje for two years. Okay. So I do, and I can reply, simple replies. She didn't 
realized that, you know, this I did until it. I was in the job. And then she was like, eh. She was so shocked. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Sorry, wording. Yeah. And when you spoke about um, Tendo, that privilege is mostly um, on the side. Oh, you understand it as you taking away from someone, right? So by virtue of me being born a woman in Kampala, I'm enjoying a certain privilege that a woman in a park may not be able to enjoy, right? The fact that I've gone to university and another woman hasn't is taking away perhaps the fact that she would have gotten a job somewhere that she wants to work, that I may get, that she's unable to get. Which just takes me to us to just understand. Um, is it possible that someone will enjoy a certain privilege in a certain maybe country or setting and then be disadvantaged or oppressed in another? Yes. Yeah? Um, yes. If Let me give this example. I hope it doesn't feel far-fetched. But... We are all familiar, I think, with uh, the effect of an American ac accent, for instance. Yeah. If a black person came from the US and they are a black American and they have an American accent, doors are going to fly open for them, you know? People are going to make way for them and put them to, they're going to quickly be elevated to boards just because of an American accent. What an American accent means, you come from a country that is a superpower. It means your education quality is like, up there uh, it means that you are intelligent and you have like this power behind you that backs you up so you will have an advantage over for instance an educated person in Uganda but when you return home to America as a black American person then you go to the garbage can you know like on the bottom of the barrel it's yeah. you in hashtags every other day so yes you can be privileged in other ways, and disadvantaged in others. Uh, another example is, uh, you know what Malcolm X says, that the black woman is the most disrespected woman in the world. Yeah. Uh, of course, that rings true everywhere. But um, I, I as, uh, as a woman with a university education, um, is going to be at, at meetings, at family meetings back at home. They'll, everyone will be listening to me. Everyone will be telling me about uh, being ac accountable to me mm -hmm. and things like that. So a woman who has not had a, a university education probably stopped in P2. The moment she starts speaking, they'll say, Tocha Ankalanya meeting, you know, like, do not disorganize the meeting. Because her opinion is not as valued, her contribution, what, what they think she's going to contribute is not also as valued. So yes. You can be privileged in one uh, category and oppressed in another context. <laughs> You'll kill me. I remember seeing a meme on Facebook <laughs> that when you're, when you're poor and you put up your hand in a family <laughs> meeting, <laughs> you know, like, let this yeah. other person who has money and is from Kampala speak. Yeah. You will speak last, right? I don't know what you think, Tendo. I think, I think that, um, and this is why it's very hard to understand privilege. One, <laughs> Um, if I'm a woman of power, it's, it's hard for me to say that I didn't get here because, you know, I didn't deserve all these things, but I'm here now. Because mm. probably, I've, in my view, I feel like I've worked hard mm. to be at a certain point. But I don't take into consideration that, you know, I had an education. I, actually, for me, the highest form of privilege is the conversations you have with people. Mm. I would think that's the highest form of privilege. Like... Just sitting with my dad and he tells me if you want to do a business, this is how it goes about having friends that have businesses, that even have cars, that even dream big, that will tell you, you know, I'm making, I don't know, like 20 million per month and then you're at 3M and then you're wondering how, how do I get there? Even just having that environment and having those conversations is privilege. But we don't think about it like that. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a woman, like say for example for me, if I'm a single mother, I'll feel like every, anytime you tell me I'm privileged, I'm like... I've worked hard to raise my child. I, you know, all those stories that us single mothers have. Smanya, I have a niece, I'm paying bills. Yeah. Like I'm doing it all by myself, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I'm not privileged. I've worked hard to get there. But I do have a university education. Yeah. I do have a group of friends that have actually made it, that I can have a conversation with about this stuff. I am feminist. I do have a group of feminists around me that are able to actually say, you know, you can make it. This is not about that and it's not about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's... Like, I'll, I'll give an example of, like, gender. If you're a woman, in patriarchal society, you are, you know, the privilege goes to men. Mm -hmm. and, and so uh, you'll find people in parliament, yeah. uh, women members of parliament, like the Ravogas. Just being in parliament doesn't mean you won't be sexually harassed. So you will be sexually harassed, even when you have the power and the money. Mm -hmm. So in one dimension, yes, she's oppressed. 
you know, you want to put a law on table, but you have to consult with the men to come on as, you know, gender champions mm. to help you voice that opinion. Yet you do have the power. You're an MP, you're elected, you've had an education, but you still have to go to men if you want to make your point known. Because yeah. for some reason, men are never called, you know, childless, you know, just desperate, just wanting the attention of, of men, emotional, irrational, and all those other things that women are called. Mm. So, yes, now you are disadvantaged in that it's a gender thing. Mm. But you do have the p more power than, you know, Tendo or a woman that's, you know, living like in rural areas. You may have more power than her. So, in a way, class privileges you, yeah. but gender puts yeah. you down. Yeah. And sometimes even just, you know, colorism, you know, yeah. being lighter, you know, my daughter the other day was telling me, we have this girl and she's so pretty by now. And I was like, how do you know that someone, you know, is prettier than you? Because she's like mixed blood. Yeah. And you know how teachers fall over themselves for these sorts of things. Yeah. So you're like, oh my God, I feel so horrible that, of course, my child is privileged in a way to be in a school that I can afford to actually pay this amount of money. Yeah. And she's light skinned. So I even feel bad because I'm thinking just because she's light skinned, she may be getting, you know, a few things yeah. just based on the fact that she's light-skinned, light skin. not yeah. based on the fact that, you know, she's a person with good character and she's working hard in school, yeah. you know. And so those are things that we never see because my friends tell me, teachers used to treat me horrible at school. And I'm like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you light-skinned, you want to understand this stuff? You know how even teachers say a kid is ugly? Because yeah. I don't know what was wrong with our <laughs> teachers, but <laughs> that way, like, yeah. and, you know, the day would just go. So, yeah, it's possible to actually, be, and I think all of us have, uh, or most of us have like a dimension in which we are privileged and another in which we are actually disadvantaged. disadvantaged yeah. and, and I agree with you. You kept on talking about your child in school and I remember I went to Aria Primary School which is now no longer there. First UPE schools then. I remember we had very many Indian kids with big hair, long hair, with very cute hair bands and all this. And I know that for black kids we used to have our hair cut off. Yeah. And then for the Indian kids and the white kids, they never ever got their hair cut off. So you, yeah, the mixed kids too. So you either had to have a disease or my head will do something or even when it came to doing classwork, like sweeping the class, doing general cleanliness around the school, it was always the Ugandan black kids doing it. And then you then see the rich kids also. They grew into having diseases that somehow did not allow for them to cut their hair. Now, that's as simply as how privilege manifests in our society. And then my sister, my little sister, is a, of a darker skin tone than I am. And she was in a lower class than I am. And I remember her running out of class just to come to my class and say, I'm not going back to that class because people are calling me black charcoal, mudugudugu. They were so rude. And you know, kids are so open right you know with adults we gossip with kids who are usually very open and she feared because and then for the younger students i remember there are more indian and mixed blood kids right so she says she doesn't want to go back to class because she doesn't belong there and then it did not even make a lot of sense until when i was an adult and i thought oh that must have been difficult right because you're of a darker skin tone you do not have hair you look a certain way that they do not appreciate so it, it goes as simply as that, right? But even when you look at her right now and then the privilege that she may enjoy with, my sister is pretty for her dark skin. It's, you know, it gets into spaces because maybe she's tall, she's being approached by all these people to do modeling things. And yeah. so I agree with you when you say that in a certain sect, we'll enjoy certain privileges and then later we may not be able to enjoy those, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe um, also just to share with, with our viewers on... What are some of the privileges that you think different people have had to enjoy? And I appreciate what you said earlier, Tendo, that a black woman, a black man in the USA enjoys a certain privilege, a black, a black heterosexual man enjoys a certain privilege that a black gay man may not be able to enjoy, right? A domestic worker in Saudi Arabia may not enjoy the privilege that a black domestic worker in Uganda enjoys right so i don't know what are some of those examples of privilege that you have had to experience because of color because of skin tend to your light skin because of your skin <laughs> color like, we've seen pretty privilege <laughs> i know there's a time on twitter when everyone was talking about pretty privilege and then light skin and then someone said this is how i was born what should i do about it you know it's not i was born a light skin what do you want me to do 
Yeah. So what are some of those ad so no, some of those examples of privilege that you have seen manifest in the different classes, the different maybe schools we've gone to, the different friends Tendo talked about, even being invited to certain spaces, having certain friends is a certain kind of privilege. Because there are certain people that know ministers because they went to certain schools. Mm -hmm. So they are a caller. Well, I know her, I could call her, right? So what are some of those maybe examples of privileges that you think that people enjoy because of their gender, because of their sex, because of their color, their tribe, because of the place they come from, because who they associate with or who they are married to, yeah. Um, and an example of privilege for me would be, of course, access to work yeah. and access to social networks. Yeah. And this uh, access to work, for instance, employment, um, if you are born of a, in a higher, in, in an ethnic group or um, a certain group, not necessarily ethnic, but a certain group of people that is considered as, um, first of all, that is wealthy, they'll propel you into employment opportunities that others may not get, like the examples that you gave. Yeah. Um, and this will, of course, I mean, well, Whoever handles your food is the one who, you know, like you're With going your to. Your CV, I'll take it yes, there for you. Yes, yes. So <laughs> when, you have, <laughs> when you have, like, access to work, of course it elevates you further in yeah. life and you enjoy more social privileges and social standing. Yeah. Um, there is also the issue of access to, to networks, to, like, social networks that if you are, may, maybe for <laughs> companionship, um, <laughs> companionship, uh, love, mating, if you come from the right, <laughs> seriously, the meeting <laughs> politics, I'll Don't just call it as simple as that because <laughs> it, it's, yes, uh, when you talk about, for instance, pretty privilege, um, you're more likely, if you want to maybe replicate your DNA, <laughs> a man or a woman, you're more likely if you're maybe heterosexual mm -hmm. and you are, um, you, you maybe have money, yeah. you are more likely to have access to people who to reproduce with you or people to create a family with. Yeah. And while other people are going to struggle, of course, if they are poor uh, or if they are not uh, considered socially attractive or of yeah. social, good social standing. I've had, you know, Bahim on the Mari Bahim, <laughs> like that kind of thing. I don't know how true yeah. it is. You say, I want a light-skinned wife because I don't have dark-skinned yeah. children. Single, so I'm sorry, ask myself, is it that I'm not socially, you know? First of all, you're representing the light-skinned people here, yeah, so you can't but say I'm not, Maybe something about social genes and people not wanting to choose me for mate. <laughs> so, like, so you have access to, to even, like, just continuation of your, of your like, your... Your DNA, for instance, yeah. um, okay, this may be, I, I really hate the fact that I have to give also reference to the US, but man, they are all over our news, so we know their stuff. Yeah. But I've had a lot of complaints about black women in the US finding it hard to get partners because <coughs> black men aspire to marry white women. The moment they get money, like look at all the players of like basketball, very, like the moment their men are elevated to a certain social class, then they aspire to marry mixed, they aspire to reproduce with, um, white people and so black women are either left with into like the whole melee of single motherhood or they struggle to actually compete in this mating game so there is that <laughs> then they are then they are like uh, couples um queer couples who yeah. want families yeah. but if you're not recognized anywhere as fit to raise children because uh, the society looks at you as one who is immoral and degenerate you can't have a family then your dreams of having a family or experiencing parenthood die wi within that society. So the privileges, like, I, I think I'll just stop here. Yeah, I I agree. Even in, in queer spaces, that there are some queer people that may be allowed to, you know, adopt children and those that are not. If you're a black, poor, lesbian woman, mm -hmm. I doubt you have, be, you know, larger chances. But also, I know that for black people outside their countries, or maybe in the US and wherever, find it difficult to adopt kids yeah in those countries while it's a lot easier and i remember in 2016 2015 until when the ministry of gender put a stop to this and then became very stringent about adoption especially by foreigners remember there were lots of kids that get, were getting taken mm -hmm. abroad for many other reasons even other than just okay. adoption not even going through the right procedure stealing kids from their parents because they imagine i'm white 
couple is going to be able to take care of a black child. Mm -hmm. And I remember conversations, and that is also a story for another day. If you cannot afford to take care of the child, and the Muzungu has come to take the child, mm -hmm. why don't you give? But don't, you know, with, with privilege, it's structural, it's systematic, yeah. right? It has a bigger and, uh, you know, explanation to it. The fact that for a white couple to come into Uganda, it's a lot easier mm -hmm. for you to adopt children than it is for black mm -hmm. people. Then that's a problem, mm -hmm. right? I don't, Tendo, I don't know what you, what examples you have interfaced um, with as a light-skinned woman. As a light-skinned, like really? <laughs> first of all, I think privilege is one, di direct and indirect. So for me, I feel like a lot of people are in the indirect space. Like somehow you privilege by the by maybe being a man in a community but it's not direct to you so you don't even ever realize it you don't realize that when you come and sit in a space and and I order coffee <coughs> and you order coffee somehow you know you ask several like Ogenda Kusasura actually this is like the funniest thing to me because I'll just go and sit first and order for my coffee and then when the bill comes they hand it over to the other person mm. which would be nice because I, I wouldn't want to spend money <laughs> but it somehow <laughs> <laughs> makes you feel like you're invisible like in this whole game you don't exist it's like when you're having your child and then there is no conversation on, on you know what name your child will be or what situations you'll be in people are just like ah kati omanyi tumutume nalumansi because nalumansi mama wafe afabali bamita nalumansi and somehow you're there seated but no one is asking your point of view, even if you carried that pregnancy for nine months and the like. It's yeah. like, no, you're Nalumansi. Ate Alice. Eh, senga weba mita Alice. And just like that, the child is Alice Nalumansi. And for you in this whole game, you're just there to like breastfeed. Omana yose, mutuwa de bambi akaba. Those are the conversations that you have. And yeah. for some reason, because we grew up in this, in this thing, mm. we never actually realize, and even as women, if it's like gender, we accept that this is the way it is mm -hmm. but even disabled people we just go up a flight of stairs just here we've just gone up a flight of stairs mm -hmm. you know we're never thinking about it just carrying our bags never thinking there are people that can't actually go up yeah. you know the flight of stairs mm -hmm. so um i just also want to put it that privilege has been there for a long time i think yeah. we look at banyakola and we're like oh they are privileged but baganda have been privileged for quite a bit yeah. of time mm -hmm. so because when i remember the schools that started most of them are in the central for girls and women especially. And so women who are related to the Kabaka, the kinsmen and what, mm. were in those schools. Mm. And so as I'm Uganda, I even don't know where I stand. Sometimes I'm like, yeah, yeah, they are privileged for 34 years, but you know, how long did colonialism take when the Uganda were, I mean, taking this whole privilege thing to another level. Mm. And, and, so, and it's structural. So now the Uganda in certain places, they own certain you know, land and then it's inbuilt and then everyone now knows Uganda. Actually, we expect people to just know Luganda. Like, I'll go to Hoima and I'll be like, Oh, you Like, Like, Tomani, and then you'll be shocked that they actually don't know. And that's yeah. like real. And for us, like, for Baganda, like, we just, for us, we're just, you know, we're in Kampala. You should know this thing. It's business language, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's business language. Tomani, Rudy Miransi, Then yeah. you like, are so shocked that the other people don't know and you don't even try to learn other people's languages because of that mm. and also you have to, uh, in Deja we had a teacher who would teach in Uganda she was a history teacher and then like I never thought about it but when I grew up I was like but why are you teaching history and you don't know English and you're doing it in Uganda because I was like Wano jamunde je obera Uganda. and just like that <laughs> like and me I never was like ah I know the language. You know when you're kids, you don't really think about it systematically. Yeah. But we used to have kids from all over, kids from the north especially, who are not Bantu. Mm. And then when I grew up, I was like, this was ridiculous. We teaching Luganda in school, and it's compulsory from S1 to S2. Things like yeah. that, yeah. Some, uh, something really that hits close to home. I've had women, of course, of upper class who have house help at home complain that a girl, you know, they call them girls. It doesn't matter, I think, how old you are. They'll call them, you know, like house help or housemaids. The girl came and then she, she's now running around with neighborhood boys and she might get pregnant. And let me just bring this together. When you are poor, you're not even, like, you're working for someone. You're not even expected to fall in love. Because <laughs> when I look at it, those days when our mothers or our aunties were complaining about how they had to chase their maids because they are running around with, like, the builders, they have a boyfriend here, and then they take them back home. And when they get pregnant, they ship 
you know, like, oh, like transport them back home. I realized how uh, lowly we think of people who provide labor for us, especially, mm -hmm. you know, like that waged labor. Um, you, they're not even expected to fall in love. They're not expected to mate. have feelings. They're not expected to mate. To mate. Like, <laughs> who do we think we are? Well, yeah. for you, you know, you are Dead getting <laughs> involved in the meeting politics. So <laughs> that is like one example that it's close to home, how yeah. we treat uh, domestic help. Helps. Yeah, mm -hmm. women themselves who are disempowered already or mm -hmm. marginalized, how mm -hmm. they treat also lower class women. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. When you say that, Anna, I think it takes me to the other thing I wanted us to discuss. Why is it extremely difficult for us to check ourselves, to even recognize that we are privileged, but also what can we do? Yeah? To make sure that our privilege from Tendo's example, I don't know if this will make sense, but to make sure that our privilege is not further oppressing another person. Because by just merely being privileged in a certain demographic, you're disadvantaging someone else. Why is it incredibly difficult for us to recognize our privilege? And then what can we do to change that? When I was thinking about this, I thought, isn't this like a moral conversation or discussion? You're basically asking me, to wish I was poor or to remove my money and give it to you, you get. So why is it difficult, one, to recognize these privileges and then, you know, appreciate the fact that because I am like this, Tendo is experiencing this and this is what I need to do to change that. Why is it difficult? I think because, uh, first of all, it puts um, responsibility onto you. Like a duty to do what? Like to act. To 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 to, to, to act. Omit to do certain things. Yeah, to, to yeah. act on things. It also makes you ashamed. Like I think I think in fact it's the first thing. First of all, it brings shame and uh, a sense of guilt that no one wants actually to possess. Um, because you are out there living your life, not thinking about privilege, and then someone is blaming you for someone else's poverty. Like. How am I connected? Even though you are intelligent enough sometimes to make a connection. Uh, for instance, when often feminists complain to Pan-Africanists, <laughs> like African feminists to Pan-Africanists, that uh, um, male Pan-Africanists or men who are Pan-Africanists seem to understand um, the politics of, of, of like systematic injustice and racial injustice. But the moment it comes down to the, the, in the lines of gender, somehow they, they, they are blind, they are deaf, they don't see anything. What are you talking about? You know, they don't understand it. And so uh, for most of us are just living our lives normally. And it makes us guilty. And the guilt uh, makes us have to do something about it. And we don't feel at times as if every, these things are in our power to do. We don't know what to do. So once I check my privilege, then what? Do I go giving every beggar on the street? Do yeah. I stop, uh, for instance, when an, uh, uh, like a Munyankore comes for a job and she passes, is it that I give to the other person who wasn't speaking so very fluently or didn't have the papers for it? What does it mean? It's quite complex. So I understand when people even get antagonized and very disorganized upstairs when they tell them, check your privilege. It's hard. It's Guilt. Hard and responsibility that you don't know where to begin. Yeah, thank you. I think also privilege blinds. Mm -hmm. So many times because I know I can walk up um, stairs without even thinking about, you know, I'm usually just complaining, there's no lift, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm able to walk up if there's no lift, right? So many times I don't even think about it. Even for people that can afford storied homes, mm -hmm. I don't think many of them have slumps in their houses because you're thinking, my kids can run up and down. Mm -hmm my partner can run up and down and that's really it so you never think about the fact that maybe you have a relative or your kids may have friends or you know many of these things we just even never think about so i know that also privilege blinds i don't know why what your opinion is attend or i think privilege one gives you status and power yeah. so and if you recognize that you have privilege you have to let go of some of that mm. which i think is the hard conversation if i'm a man I recognize I have privilege. Now, all of a sudden, I have to share my power with women. I have to say, you know, to, to let go of my status and position in society. Mm -hmm. That means I lose something. And mm -hmm. as human beings, we don't want to lose things. Yeah. Two, I think that uh, one, what I said, that it's undeserved. And no one wants to be seen as a person who didn't work hard to get where they are. <laughs> and because in my heart, I know I've worked hard. I mean, 
I've worked hard to bring up my daughter. I've worked hard, you know, to be where I am. I'm a manager of a company. It doesn't matter whether my father was rich and loaned me. I still work late hours. So for me, it's based on my hard work and not on the privilege. If I say I'm privileged, I have to give that up. And I don't, no one wants to be the person who has undeserved things, like as if I'm a thief. Yeah. So those are like the two conversations that yeah. people usually have. Um, but I think one thing, I think the thing to realize is that because you're born in a society and you're privileged because of a certain way, it's, it's, it's actually not your fault. But what you do with that privilege is what then now becomes your fault. So to recognize it, you have to read, you have to learn, you have to interact with people. Because it's not easy to just recognize, oh, I'm privileged in education and this. So you have to interact. Mm -hmm. But also you have to use your privilege for the good of others. Yeah. Because I think you're privileged. Now what are you going to do? I have the money. Yeah. Am I just going to go and party it away and say, you know, poor people just want to be poor. They are not working hard. Or am I going to set up like, I don't know, maybe an organization or a visla and put money into it and enable people to, you know, loan out and yeah. then, you know, do something for themselves. That, that for me then would be like, I'm privileged, but I can use that to the good of others, which many people have done, politicians, yeah. academicians, you know, you have to recognize that. But it's not easy to just give away your power and say, uh, uh, you know what, I didn't work as hard as the next person. Yeah. Actually, I got these things undeserved. Yeah. It's a hard conversation. I agree. I don't know why it's hard, but I think you give really legitimate reasons. The responsibility that it brings on you that every time I go to the bank, I have to think about the fact that there is a disabled person that may need to just go before me yeah. to see the manager before I pick my millions. It's, it's a very hard conversation because one, we're not self-aware. Many of us are not self-aware. We do not want to take the responsibility. No one wants to get rid of their power or their social status because we are basically human beings and, and everyone wants to get into that position where they can keep enjoying, enjoying, yeah. enjoying without thinking about that other person that's not there. These are some of our opinions about privilege and would like to hear from you because we cannot exhaustively do this in just 30 minutes. Share with us in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed to Black No Sugar on our YouTube channel. But also check out our Left Book Cafe for amazing coffee, great food, and they have actually new books. Bye.